Hi there everyone. Hello. Welcome to the FinTutors channel. My name is Devansh and I am the lead tutor at FinTutors and I'm here again as always to do the pre-scene analysis for the management and gateway case study exam that is coming up in November 2022 and February 2023. It's a very specific video with the very specific case study discussion to help you understand the company better and eventually ace your exam. So this pre-scene analysis is noted by us, is created by us in a very detailed way, yet keeping it informative, yet keeping it fun, yet keeping it engaging to make sure that we understand the depths of the company that Seema has given us because without that writing a good mock answer will not be possible. So I welcome you to this first part of the pre-scene and before I start to discuss the company that's been given to us, I want to introduce our free mini course. Now we want to help as many students as possible and we are doing lots of webinars with SEMA regionally as well as internationally because of the high pass rates that we get. We have been teaming up with SEMA and we found a way to give our material to our students as much as possible and we decided to create a free mini course. So this free mini course is a three day course that we have created. It's absolutely free. And over this course, we try to give you an introduction to the exam as well as what this exam is, how you should study, the blueprint explanations. It gives you a chance to view our material as a sample and it really enhances your study process. This mini course is completely free. It gives you the extra industry analysis which we have created. It gives you a mock question. It gives you a personalized study timetable. It's completely free. So let's just try it out. I have left the link in the description below. In the description box below, you'll find a link for the free mini course. Just click on that link and it will take you to our FinTutors website where you can start following this free material and make sure that you take this exam with a confident, confident approach. So it's a free mini course, try it out. It's from a SEMA registered tuition provider. So you are for sure going to find it helpful. Coming back, this is the first part of the pre-scene that I'm presenting to you. My entire pre-scene is close to three hours long but I'm presenting the first part to you and making it available to you so you can see the time, effort and quality that this material brings to your study. Without further ado, let's begin with the first part of the pre-scene now. First, we are going on to the introduction part. Now, in every management gateway case study exam, the first thing that they'll give us is an introduction of the company and what is your role in this organization? You know what they expect you to do in this organization that will be clearly laid out. Now, remember, this is an unnoted pre-scene, which means everywhere we have tried to link your E2, P2 and F2 syllabus, but not making it very mechanical. We've tried to keep it as a summary as well. We've tried to not lengthen things unnecessarily because I could have, you know, this video of the entire pre-scene analysis is close to three hours. This is the first part that you're doing. So it will be about one hour. If I went into detail of every single thing, it would be a never ending story. And that much detail is not required. Because we are registered providers, because we have been doing this for a long time, we know the type of questions that they come up with and the level of detail that is needed. All of that is kept in mind and we have done this pre-scene annotation for you. So starting with this annotation now, Happy Place is a quoted toy retailer. The company that's been given to us, we already mentioned it, is called Happy Plays. It's a quoted toy retailer that has a chain of retail shops. So it's a chain of shops. Happy Place also sells a substantial quantity of its toys online. So when I read this and when I read anything in the pre-scene, 
I will always try to highlight the important words, important ideas. And then you'll see these text boxes come up that we have added, linking it to your E2, P2 and F2 syllabus, giving you substance and giving you, uh, you know, related knowledge. So from this line, I saw an important word which says quoted toy retailer, which means it's a company that is listed on the stock exchange. And to be listed on the stock exchange, you definitely have to be a company that's large enough. So firstly, you are listed on the stock exchange. So let me just keep in mind the benefits of being a listed company and the limitations of being a listed company, just for us to start with some substance. Now, Happy Place being a listed company has advantages like you can raise capital for growth if needed. Your company has good visibility. Your company has good efficiency and transparency because, you know, everything's listed on the stock exchange. Everything's reported. The disadvantages are that for a quoted company, there are a lot of rules, regulations, reporting requirements that you have to follow to make sure that there are no liabilities or penalties, which is a quite a cumbersome process. Let's just keep this in mind because this is part of my F2 syllabus. If it was an unquoted company, then a very realistic exam scenario could have been a situation where we are now getting listed. But since it's a quoted company, we made an analysis giving you a simple advantages, disadvantages. So you keep that in mind. It's a chain of retail shops. It's not only one shop, it's a chain. So in different cities, we will be present. Our presence will be there as a shop. Happy Place also sells its toys online. So we are also selling online, not only the traditional uh, retailing in shops. Again, I thought about something important here, which was the four things which I found out are the main categories or characteristics of any service business that it must get right. Now you're a retailer, right? So you're offering a service, you're not manufacturing anything, you're not making anything, you're not actually manufacturing a product, you're only selling it. So for a service business, what do you think are the core competencies? I've tried to list them out. First is the offering clarity, which means you are a game retailer. So what kind of products are you selling and how are you expanding your product range? Remember, you are a game retailer. You have to stay true to that. You can't just start selling vegetables tomorrow. So the offering that your company has has to be clear, has to be very clear in terms of what culture is set within the company. Then there is the funding mechanism, which means how is your company running? Where is it getting its money from? How is it raising the finance that is needed? That is the funding mechanism. So for any service business, funds are very important, right? Because they are stocking inventory, then selling that inventory, then they have to pay their suppliers. So the funding will be very important. When we go deeper into the pre-scene, we'll see how our company Happy Place deals with the inventory, deals with the funding. We'll get to that. But right now, I thought it was important to mention these characteristics. The third one is an employee management system. For any business that is service oriented, employees are key because you are going to face the customer. You're going to provide a service to the customer. So employee management and having the right people in the right place will be very important for our business. And fourth, a customer management system. You're dealing with customers, right? Your day to day dealing is with customers. Your job is to satisfy them, to make them happy so that they come back and buy from you. So a customer management system is very important and these are the four pillars for any service business and this is true for our company Happy Place as well like I have just explained. So throughout the pre-scene I'll keep doing these discussions you know I'll keep mentioning important stuff which I feel students need to know and that's how we'll go through the pre-scene together in a simple yet you know informative way. 
on the next page they tell us that happy place operates in west area we see that a local company they they're telling us that we operate only in west area okay so we are a local company from our industry analysis those who haven't done my industry analysis i'll first ask you to go through the industry analysis because it's quite important to give you a background and a good experience when you start with the pre seed in the industry analysis we've spoken about the real world industry of toy retailers and the toy market so from our industry analysis reading there is an opportunity to grow and expand since we are a big company in our local market and that's what major companies have done first establish themselves as a good big major player and then look at bases and areas and opportunities outside of their market where they can expand so happy place operates in west area as of now you have local credentials which are also important because people in your country will buy into your brand a little bit better because you are a local company a developed country west area is a developed country that has a strong economy and whose citizens have a high standard of living why is this important now think from a game retailers perspective there are lots of sophisticated games there are lots of educative games there are a lot of patented trademark copyrighted games which are quite expensive and do you think these expensive games are going to or expensive toys whatever are going to sell in a country that's going through an economic crisis i don't think that's possible so it's important for us that we have positioned ourselves in a country that is developed and people have a good standard of living so they have disposable income they have the money they have the power to spend on such offerings so this tells us that the demand conditions of west area are quite strong and demand conditions relate to your external market analysis which is part of your e2 syllabus So from this we also learn that West Area is a highly developed economy which means that people will have the interest and the disposable income to spend on these innovative educated and sophisticated toys which our company retails West Area's currency is the W dollars West Area company law requires companies to prepare their financial statements in accordance with the IFRS so the IFRS IAS have been dealt with in your F2 syllabus and this is this line is important for us to point out because students often uh, you know just skip parts of the syllabus of F2 they feel that you know uh, how why should i learn an IAS or why should i know the sums or why should i know a certain formula this is why they're clearly telling you that our company prepares financial statements in accordance with the IFRS so if they were to ask you how a lease will be accounted how a financial asset or a financial liability will be accounted you won't have to solve a sum but you'll still have to give that explanation whether we should record a provision or not you should know the rules of how a provision is recorded in IAS 37 you should know that and for me this is very important to point out so that you start to understand that without revision we are not going anywhere there are three pillars of this exam the first pillar is the revision pillar the second pillar is the pre seen pillar and the third pillar is mock writing pillar you can't move on to mock writing if the first two are not strong when students if and those students that have chosen to sign up with us have our study material have our direction we'll have our full pre seen analysis and we'll have the opportunity to write mock questions as well so all three make a good exam approach and that is why throughout the pre seen we'll point out important syllabus areas for you as well now we speak about your role you are a finance manager at happy places head office your primary responsibilities are associated with management accounting and you report to yongmei yin the senior financial manager who reports directly to the finance director 
they have given you your role that this is your role where you play the part of a finance manager at happy places head office let's recall a little bit your role as a finance manager would include medium term focus investment appraisal decisions costing related decisions support project management support long term financing decision making support advance financial reporting advising the top management advising your stakeholders dealing with uh, conflicts all of this is what a finance manager does in day to day life this is your role in this case study as well so firstly your role is mimicking that of a finance officer or finance manager in the day to day life secondly when you look at these topics you will see that these topics are a direct relation to your e2 p2 and f2 syllabus so indirectly seema is telling you that to be a good finance manager you will need to have knowledge of e2 p2 and f2 you will have to have revised your e2 p2 and f2 because investment appraisal part of p2 long term financing part of f2 advising top management on decision making part of p2 stakeholder management e2 these are straight topics from e2 p2 and f2 so if you want to do well on this exam the first place to start with is revision and that is further evidenced over here next we are speaking about the toy industry so they've given us an industry detailing as part of the pre scene itself but this is very much related to happy place and its market my industry analysis that i've given is about the real world external global market external trends external opportunities stuff like that but this toy industry analysis is also important obviously because it's part of the pre scene but if you've done my extra industry analysis it will be a good transition for you and things will make a little bit more sense but let's start toys can take many forms ranging from simple play things for infants to sophisticated models and puzzles which are for adults as well now toys all of us somewhere somehow may have experienced them played with them kids playing playing with them we have seen it we are exposed to toys in very many ways toys are essentially products that are intended to stimulate play and sometimes learning through play so kind of the education part is also done through toys so as we read in our industry analysis this is one of the positive trends of this market you know parents are moving their children away from this digital uh, exposure to toys which is giving them education and it's also helping them develop other skills this is one of the positive trends in the market so hence for my company competition analysis and having good industry background and experience is going to be key because if i don't pick up on the external market changes if i don't pick up on what my competitors are selling as happy plays then how will i be able to increase my revenue increase my sales knowing your business model and staying true to the same will be key a detailed competitor analysis is also important in any service industry because you will be competing with other retailers right you need to know what they are doing you need to uh, you know just catapult yourself ahead of them and for all of this an external market analysis is key which is part of our e2 syllabus market analysts are generally agreed that toys fall within the following categories so they have uh, you know created some categories of toys which we'll go through the first category is action figures now all of us know what action figures are and i've put the image here as well to make uh, you know sense so action figures are models that can take many different forms ranging from small molded plastic figures to larger posable figures many action figures are based on characters from television series or from films and toy manufacturers will often pay film producers for the right to manufacture their toy under license 
For example, if I see a Jurassic Park movie, the company Lego, which makes toys, has taken has, has removed a new Jurassic Park edition of their game. So obviously they would have had to take permission from the producers of the Jurassic Park movie. That's what I'm trying to mention and that's what the pre-scene is trying to mention as well. That they often pay film producers for the right to manufacture such toys under license. So I just gave you the example of a game, but the same happens with action figures as well. A very popular product, getting exclusive rights to sell action figures for a limited time can be one of the marketing ploys which is used by major retailers. For example, if a movie is famous and if an action figure comes out on that movie, I'll make an, uh, with the toy manufacturer, I'll make an exclusive arrangement where only I as Happy Plays will sell their product in the market. This will obviously give me publicity. This will obviously increase my sales. So having that relationship with the toy manufacturer will be an important part of this market. Next category is the arts and crafts category. Now arts and crafts include crayons, paints, plasticine, and other products that can be used by children to create models and drawings. We know what arts and crafts are. It'll be your color pencils, pencils, paint, scissors, all of that. Craft toys can be designed for unstructured play. They can include large boxes of crayons or markers that use washable ink. Craft toys can also be used to encourage more structured creativity. Coloring books provide children with line drawings that can be filled with uh, crayons, pencils, so important skills in their infant years. These products are usually aimed at quite a narrow age group. Children can play with crayons from age of 18 months and some craft crayons will appeal to children as old as 10 years if they're interested in drawing, coloring, stuff like that. So, so far, action figures and in this arts and crafts, we've seen that we are focusing upon children up to 10 years old. A focused marketing and selling strategy can be the key to success in any retailing business. So how are you going to market so that these categories of buyers are influenced, are interested. So different marketing strategies, different selling strategies from your P2 syllabus become very important here. So like I said, keep in mind your innovative marketing techniques. And for any selling business, benchmarking can be also used to understand your shortcomings, to understand where you can do better. If you realize that your competitor is doing better in selling a particular product or in uh, overall sales, you can benchmark yourself to that competitor to understand where you are going wrong, why you are going wrong. So benchmarking can be an important process in the retail industry. I found this important because it's also mentioned in your E2 syllabus and that is why I'm bringing it up to you. As you can see at each stage, each step, we are trying to make sense of the material that they've given and relate it to our business, Happy Place, and also related to the E2, P2, and F2 syllabus. That is very important. Moving on to the third category now, the first we did action figures, second arts and crafts, third is building sets. Building sets consist of metal or plastic parts that can be used to build models. For example, Lego. Building sets can be designed to encourage creative play with children designing and building their own creations as well. Building sets can be designed to construct a particular object as well, like you can make a car, a house, etc. Such models are often based on characters, vehicles or locations. So again, your uh, aspect of patents, trademarks for the manufacturer is coming into the picture. Building sets are sold for children of all ages, including complicated kits that are intended to be constructed by adults only. Some products are designed for play by children from 18 months with large parts that are easily handleable and are safe to play. So this is just giving you the criterias over here. 
Next category is dolls. There are several types of dolls that allow for differences between age groups in children's and different ways to play with dolls. Baby dolls represent infants and are designed for play in which doll is nurtured and cared for. Large dolls are between 30 and 50 centimeters tall. So this is telling you that dolls are another category of toys. Mini dolls are also present which are pocket sized. Fashion dolls are sold to be dressed and accessorized to enable play based on the ch on changing the doll's appearance and or occupation. So not too much of an analysis that we can make here, but just to show you that a toy retailer like ours will have to keep all of this different category of toys in stock because only you don't know what customer wants what. A customer can have a wide variety of requirements, can have, uh, you know, any kind of requirement being a toy store, you have to fulfill that requirement. So you will have to have these different kinds of products in your inventory ready to offer the customer. So you can see how difficult this business is going to be ma uh, to manage in terms of the inventory aspect. Let's keep that in mind. Next category we're looking at is electronic games. Electronic games take the form of physical devices that have been preloaded with software that cannot be changed. Gameplay usually involves colored lights or audio beeps. These are electronic games. Again, they are used for uh, stimulating learning for preschool children or to enable individual or group play by older children as well. For example, you pay, you know, whatever game on a tablet or a phone as a group where you play. And also, this the, uh, there are educative games for preschool children. So electronic games are also quite popular from the education perspective, plus from the social perspective as well. Electronic games are a separate category from video games such as game consoles and the software that is run on them is completely different. So don't confuse electronic games with your console games and video games. They are two different things. Moving to the next category, we have non-electronic games like the ones that we used to pay back in time, uh, you know, board games, deck of cards. These are all non-electronic games and they can take many different forms. Play often centers around a board or a deck of cards. There is usually a competitive element to the game as well. Some games are based on chance, but there are strategic thinking games as well. Games vary in terms of their intellectual property. Games such as draughts, checkers are generic and are manufactured freely. So there are non-electronic games as well. Now, what I've been seeing so far throughout all the categories is that intellectual property is being mentioned over and over again. So everything relating to uh, copyrights, trademarks, intellectual property, patents, they are all intangible assets, which is part of your IAS 38, which is part of your F2 syllabus. So for a game manufacturer, taking care of not violating any copyright, trademark or intellectual property is key. But for a game retailer like ourselves, we should take care of counterfeit products, fake products and report any such happenings to game manufacturers as this would harm their reputation, harm their sales. Because at the end of the day, your shops are everywhere. Your chain is everywhere. So you are in touch with the customer. You are in touch with the market and you may have insights into counterfeit products which violate these copyrights, trademarks and being sold at pretty much half the price or even less than that. At the end of the day, it's harming the toy market or the game market, which you are part of. So game manufacturers are our major stakeholders and managing this relationship is going to be very important. Your connection with game manufacturers is the most important. They are going to be your major stakeholder and managing stakeholders is part of your Mendelo's matrix, which is part of the E2 syllabus. 
So at every stage, relate to E2, P2, and F2 to give you important topic areas and focus areas to make sure that we don't miss out on something that is important. Next, some games involve patented or trademarked elements that belong to the manufacturer. I just mentioned about that. Games can also involve images based on films or television programs. Again, they are licensed. So now that we are starting to see the far reaching market that toy stores have access to, we understand that it's a big market and a big industry. So many categories, focusing on the right areas and using data is a key competency in this market. So now in this retail sales market, big data, data analytics is something that is really, really prominent because you're in touch with the customer to understand what the customer is buying, how they're buying it, where they're buying it from. All of this data is invaluable in today's modern time, especially for a retail business. So as we go deeper into the pre-scene, we will speak about data and its opportunities, giving you some real world examples as well. This is part of your E2 syllabus and I thought it important to mention here. That's why I have brought it up. Next category is infant toys or preschool toys, whatever you want to call it. Now these toys are designed to stimulate play and learning for babies and young children. Now baby toys comprise items such as rattles as well as more sophisticated battery powered products that may offer visual or oral stimulation. So just for education purposes, for entertainment purposes, both. Toys aimed at children from 18 months to school age are often adaptations of other categories of toys that are designed to be played with safely. For example, action figures or dolls with no small parts that might be swallowed are given to children from 18 months to school age. If they are licensed, they may be based on characters from preschool programs as well. So they're repeatedly mentioning copyrights, licensing, trademarks, patents, and there is a lot of intellectual property surrounding toys. These products will be sophisticated and limited edition also, and hence their prices would reflect the same. As a retailer in a developed nation, we would have the opportunity to stock such items as people will have the interest and the power to buy these products. So again, linking into the information that they have already given us. Next category, we have the plush category. This category comprises stuffed animals and similar products. These range from teddy bears to more abstract designs. Many plush toys are sold to the preschool market. Plush toys can be manufactured cheaply. Some brands of plush toys, again, are trademarked and are often sold to collectors. So they can be sophisticated and highly priced. Some plush toys are based on characters from popular children books as well. Next, we have vehicles. Now, toy vehicles can be plastic or metal of real or imaginary cars, trucks or buses. Toy vehicles can also be licensed copies of real cars. Toy vehicles are sold to a wide range of ages from plastic models designed for preschool children to limited edition models sold to adult collectors as well. So for each category, there is turning out to be two you know, kind of main buyers for what it's meant for and the other is the collector category. So also in your shops, if you have collectors items, they can sell for unbelievable amount of prices, which is extra revenue for your business. So up until now, we have not even reached speaking about the company. The first thing that we dealt was with your role, the introduction. Second part we're dealing with is the toy industry and the toy categories. Have we started to speak about happy place? No. So while doing these initial instructions itself, we have learned so much about the market. We have related so much to happy place. We know when we get to that discussion deeper into the pre-scene, we'll be able to relate better. We'll be able to make sense of stuff better. Next, branded products are sold on the basis of known and trusted brand names. Obviously, if you buy a Lego game, you know what you're going to get. 
generic products are not sold on the basis of brand there are always products which are uh, you know locally made and not branded they won't have the same price now it will be important to understand the stance and culture of happy plays in terms of the products it sells deeper into the pre scene when we start speaking about our company we will try to understand does my company offer premium games at a premium price are we like an experiential store or are we a store that keeps everything which also includes locally branded cheap priced products we we'll learn that about our company but now you will be able to really point it out because i have put this question in your mind that's what we do when we do our pre scene analysis the above classification excludes certain items that could be described as toys but are often sold through specialist retailers for example bicycles video game consoles you don't call them generally toys but you will generally find them at toy stores excluded from analysis and reports on the toy industry even though some toy retailers sell them alongside traditional sale uh, toys or traditional sales on this basis the vestarian toy market generated retail sales of almost 8 billion w dollars in 2021 we already know that this is a huge market worldwide the toy market worldwide is very huge and is also a big market in west area which we are learning again over here this is also an indication that other markets around the world could have lucrative opportunities for expansion something that we learnt in our industry analysis so product development as well as market development selling the same products but in a different market can be on the cards for happy plays which we'll discuss further when we get deeper to the pre scene and to the financial part as well after that interestingly they've given us the revenue split of each traditional toy uh, segment so action figures they say generate 0.6 billion arts and crafts building sets all have been listed down with their related revenue that they are expected to generate and that they generated in 2021 let me put it that way so from these numbers we can see and it's important for our business as well to segment the market because until and unless there is segmentation how do you understand which is the most popular what do customers want what are customers looking for it's going to be difficult to identify that right so segmentation is very important part of your p2 syllabus market segmentation very important this segmentation here tells us that the categories that are going to generate the most revenue is going to be arts and crafts dolls and outdoor sport toys going to be the largest segment these can be considered as important segments to market upon to focus upon to do well in the vestarian market so this segmentation tells us like i said the major categories that we should focus on that we should market on to make sure that most buyers are in that category so if we appeal to them we can look to get that sale we can look to uh you know let them get into our store and then have a look at our, the other categories as well so focusing your marketing and innovating marketing techniques are going to be very important which i have spoken about before and the importance of the same comes out again over here so the first segment that they gave us was about the toy industry and the different kinds of toys now they are speaking about the vestarian retail toy market speaking about the retail market specifically over here now now they say that there are five main categories of toy retailers in west area so west area has five main retail categories that's what they are telling us starting with independent toy retailers any market will have independent toy retailers i feel which are your small specialized toy shops or they sell toys alongside complementary products 
such as baby clothes or other goods that are intended to be used by children they most have only one outlet they have their own shop or a family run shop or a shop in the city center where they'll have window displays and they'll sell complementary products with toys that's the first category obviously happy place is not in this category because we are a chain of uh, shops next toy shop chains coming to what happy place is toy shop chains have multiple branches that specialize in toys they also sell complementary product lines such as children's bicycles the shops themselves tend to be large and laid out as toy supermarkets they are frequently located in out of town retail parks because you need a larger place a bigger space a bigger area for these huge toy chains west area has two toy shop chains namely happy plays and gleet hill both sell online as well as from their shops so they are clearly telling you there are two main toy shop chains in your country so since there are two toy shop chains the competition in the market is going to be intense and hence competition analysis and having a keen eye for competitor strategies is very very important e2 syllabus these companies are always trying to expand their complementary product range as margins are any which way is tight for retailers so adding more to your catalog is encouraging more footfall into your toy shop which could lead to higher sales so all toy companies are always looking to expand their complementary product range because they want people to enter the shop once they enter the shop they'll can entice them to buy something extra next there are catalog stores as well now catalog retailers sell a wide range of goods customers can select products for purchase from a printed catalog or the retailer's website before visiting a shop to make a payment and collect their selected product so there is a catalog that's printed or the website where you see the product if you like it you go into the shop make the payment online maybe go into the shop collect your product these retailers do not display their products in shop so their fixed cost is very less because they don't have to run a shop no costs related to running a shop because everything is you know done online or through a, a catalog that's printed that's why they are called catalog stores goods for resale are stored out of sight of customers maybe in a warehouse and are fetched by the staff after the customers have paid you just come and collect covers catalog is westeria's only catalog retailer it sells a huge range of goods including toys the company has many branches and also sells good online for home delivery so this is going to be again your major competitor because they are selling goods including toys so the company has many branches and sells online as well for home delivery purposes so catalog stores are really popular becoming popular so as we go deeper into the pre scene we'll see whether there is an opportunity for us happy place to open up a small catalog store in another part of the world in maybe another uh, you know neighboring country as a model of expansion just to start out is that a possibility we'll think about that and i've put that seed into your mind which we'll discuss more once we get to our company next there are online retailers as well now dedicated online retailers do not operate physical shops goods are chosen and paid for through websites and then delivered to customers homes browser shop is west area's only dedicated online retailer whose product range has toys so they sell everything online there is no physical shop and they sell toys as well so again you are competitor you have another competitor in supermarkets supermarkets sell a wide range of non food items through their stores sometimes toys as well you know in the checkout counter they might have some color pencils you know they might have the small playing cards or a or a uh, selling or a game that sells which is popular 
we have seen that right so customers find it convenient to buy toys while shopping for groceries supermarkets often sell non food items at a discount in order to get customers into their stores the whole game is getting the customer into your store once they are in your store you can influence them to buy your products now if i think about it as an overall perspective we know that this market is going to be intensely competitive because the same game is being sold online it's being sold in supermarkets is being sold as your at your competitors toy chain being sold at individual toy stores being sold by you also so why should the customer buy from you there should be a reason right so the competition is going to be high because of the nature and the availability of the product how we compete is going to be important to see and our business model is going to be important to see which is given deeper in the pre-seen so price marketing innovations product catalogs customer service will be key differentiators for any retailing business specifically if my business wants to do well it has to focus on these four areas interestingly they've given us a pie chart also over here so the same thing that they had mentioned in terms of the competitors they've given us a pie chart over here which we can now analyze the western and retail toy market by revenue if you look at it supermarkets are giving 23% of the revenue so 23% covers give 17% browser shop 15 gleetel your direct competitor is 5% more revenue than yours happy place is 10% and independent toy retailers still have a big percentage of the market at 20%. So what we can see over here is out of the entire pie chart our number is the smallest. Which means there is still opportunity for happy place to expand in this market by taking over market share. But if it feels that okay these other players have already Uh, have their uh, roots very deep in this market and wants to do something new the best way to expand the best way to be a first mover would be to go abroad would be to look at our prospects abroad maybe in a nearing country maybe in high developing nations which is the asia pacific region that i mentioned in the industry analysis so this pie chart opens up opens us up to those possibilities collectively the toy shop chains have the largest share of retail market with a total of 25% but they are struggling to maintain market share in the face of competition from all the other aspects so like i just told you collectively us and our competitor gleetel give 25% of the or own 25% of this market but we are struggling to maintain this so the best possible way to grow would be to do something non traditional non conventional or maybe look at market development so the same thing that i said if i put it into sema terms it becomes innovation of the business model and market development could be on the cards for happy place both of which are part of your p2 syllabus business model and market development and since we are talking about expansion in any case you know you are talking about expansion in terms of your own market or in terms of a product or in terms of innovating yourself it will come with risk risk related decision making risk attitudes your payoff tables decision trees this becomes very important from your p2 syllabus nothing from p2 can be left out because it's a very important syllabus area which we are just understanding covers catalog is the largest individual toy retailer although it is slowly losing market share to browser shop browser shop is selling everything remember it does not have any shop everything online it's an online seller covers catalog is responding by focusing more on online sales and home delivery which suggests that the retail toy market will be driven by online selling so the major trend in this market is to sell online we have to find ways to sell online if we want to remain relevant when we go to speak about happy place we'll see do we have a sophisticated website 
is there an opportunity for us to uh, you know have or offer a mobile application as a differentiation technique just to be different just to offer something personalized to your customer is that possible the full potential of data analysis and data mining can give invaluable sales data again important for a retailer part of the e2 syllabus which we must keep in mind the supermarkets are a significant part of the retail market despite the fact that they tend to offer only a limited range that is restricted to the most popular toys to give you a simple example a happy place store has 7000 toys on its shelves major supermarket has only 1200 so you are putting in that extra effort you're blocking your money in inventory you have a huge store you have staff but still a good amount of sales are being done through supermarkets which means and which they have mentioned that our market is being encroached you have to do something new you have to do something different independent toy retailers struggle to complete against the other players because obviously they'll buy two games or three games or three teddy bears for example a huge chain like ours is going to place an order for 1000 teddy bears or 10000 teddy bears so obviously we'll get a better price we can sell to customers at a higher price again because of our presence so our margins are going to be better and hence independent toy retailers all around the world are struggling some independent retailers specialize in particular type of toys such as handmade toys or wooden toys or wooden dolls this is a niche market that they are focusing on and can offer them a high margin but we are not looking to do the same as of now because mine is a big chain i have to cater to a large audience so this has given us the competitive nature of this market again the next segment they speak about again specifically retailers and manufacturers the relation is going to be very important which i have also mentioned for you buying decisions in the toy industry are heavily influenced by tastes of children the market is constantly changing as each generation of children moves from one age group to the next so they want something else they're not going to buy the same toy that they did when they were 10 years old for example demand for toys can be influenced by children's television viewing habits or by the publication of a popular new book those changes are not always easy to predict so lots of uncertainty in the market also exists risk exists so prediction and correct stocking decisions will be very important for example if a group of customers there is a demand in the market and they want a specific toy you didn't predict that toy to have a good demand you didn't buy it you didn't place that order to have in your stores you lost out on major revenue so prediction and correct stocking decisions sorry will be very important for this business this brings up the topics of risk over here so price risk is arising out of adverse movements in the price of a game as it is not selling so i'm thinking about the different risks that our company could face that our company can face the first one is price risk like i just read out there can be a risk that you bought a game you stocked it nicely because you thought there's going to be good sales but it went out of fashion nobody wants to buy it nobody is interested in it same way there can be quantity volume risk you bought 10000 units only 2000 sold there can be cost risk again you incurred that cost by buying that game inventory risk there is political risk as well because in our industry analysis we learned that majority of the games are manufactured in china because major game manufacturers are choosing to make over there there is a political risk with china going on right now correct all over the world it could harm the supply chain so your p2 topics of risk management are very important and while going through the pre seen try to find out ways which your company can be exposed to risk because risk management identifying risks is important so while going through the pre seen i have highlighted the risks for you but you can also have a list where you list down all the risks that you feel our company faces 
because the topic of risk management and the model of TARA, transfer, avoid, reduce, accept, TARA, from the P2 syllabus is very important. Next, toy manufacturers tend to combine the following approaches to maintain the popularity of their brand. So what do toy manufacturers do to maintain popularity? First thing they do is incremental changes to the existing product. To the current product, they'll change something, maybe the color, the design a little bit. Those incremental changes can have a huge investment opportunity in terms of additional sales, in terms of popularity. Toys that are sold as a series or as a range, such as model cars, can be enhanced by replacing the least popular models with new ones. The promotion of the new models can stimulate demand across the entire range. Advertising and promotional activities are also kept under review. Manufacturers work with retailers to persuade them to position their products in prominent positions. So like I have mentioned, there is going to be a good important communication process and flow of information between retailers and toy manufacturers because that is how the demand in the market can be picked up. So your communication related topics from E2 are also important to look at. After that, new products. Most toy manufacturers aim to develop innovative new products. These generally offer a limited downside risk with the possibility of a substantial upside gain. New toys can be subject to market research and testing before their manufacturers decide to launch them. And it is relatively unusual for a new toy to become a commercial failure. At least it will be used for one or two years and uh, you know after that it will give its benefit. Occasionally, new toys generate a massive demand. They become so famous that there is shortage of them. Retailers are keen to order as many copies as the manufacturer can deliver. The sales opportunities created by sought after toys tend to be short lived though because there the market will always be flooded with imitations, counterfeit products. So over here, understanding the product life cycle and estimating the demand will be so very important because if we can estimate the life cycle accordingly, you can place your order. So understanding the product life cycle and how to extend the life cycle for retailers as well and to be in communication with manufacturers is important. And the product life cycle is part of the P2 syllabus. Toy manufacturers will frequently attempt to persuade retailers to place large orders for toys that are due to be launched in the hope that there will be a huge demand, but no success can be predicted. So any retailer is going to have obsolete stock. Supply chain management will be very important while placing these orders. E2 syllabus. Cash flow management is also going to be very important as we don't want majority of our cash to be tied up in obsolete inventory. F2 syllabus. So at every stage relating to important syllabus areas, giving you areas, giving you topics that you can focus upon so we can attack them, we can revise them and then we can test you when we go to mock question writing. That has got us to the end of the pre-scene analysis part one. If you look at it in a broad perspective, I've done about eight pages of the original pre-scene which is one third of the pre-scene done for you in part one. As we go deeper, we have part two and part three, which is about the company and the financials. Each part is very well collated by us and we break it down to not make it one huge boring recording. We try to divide it in such a way that it remains interesting for you that it remains, uh, you know, something that you are interested in because it will be very important to make sure that the pre-scene is understood. We don't want any compromises with the pre-scene. The entire pre-scene analysis is three hour long, close to three hours. And in those three hours, each part of the case study is 
taken up related to E2, P2 and F2 and even more detailed when we go to the financial section. So I hope you have found part one helpful. If you found part one helpful and want to access our full pre-scene analysis and our full material, you can sign up by visiting the MCS page. I've left the link on the screen. If you have any questions with the sign up, you can simply write to us on help at fintutors.com. Then if you have any questions, we'll most happily answer them for you. But if you found our material helpful, do sign up, start studying with us because our mock questions are coming after the pre-scene and they will really enhance your study process. So I hope part one was helpful and I'm sure the time passed away because when you do something that you like, something that's interesting, the time really flows by and that's what we try to do through all of our recordings. Thank you for being here. Hope you found this helpful and I hope to see you on the other side studying a course with us. Thank you.